Hello people, uh, today we are going to learn about inventories and the cost of goods sold. So let's see. Uh, how inventory is defined? Inventory is defined as goods owned and held for sale to customers. Uh, it is also called current assets. The flow of inventory costs. As purchase cost or manufacturing cost are incurred, Whenever we purchase inventory, it becomes our current asset and its entry is done in the balance sheet. And as the inventory is sold as goods to the customers, it becomes uh, an entry in the cost of goods sold as an, uh, in the income statement like this. Um, in a perpetual inventory system, inventory entries parallel the flow of costs. So, uh, how journal entry will be made uh, whenever there is a purchase of inventory and whenever there is a sale. So, let's see. Whenever um, the company will purchase inventory, uh, it will do a journal entry like this. Inventory on the debit side, the value of the inventory and accounts payable on the credit side. And whenever this entry is, uh, inventory is sold, on the sale date, this following will be the entry. Cost of goods sold on the debit side and inventory on the credit side. Uh, so here is the entry on the sale date. But the question here arises is how do we know uh, which, uh, which cost uh, should be entered? Uh, like there could be a different cost for the inventory uh, purchased at different point of time for the same kind of unit. So let's see how we can decide on that. A, se a separate subsidiary account is maintained for each item in the inventory. Uh, so this is how we do entry whenever, for example, on September 5, the, uh, the company purchased 100 units and per unit cost was $1.30. So total cost of the purchase for of inventory would be 30 multiplied by 100 which is which is three thousand dollars on september 9 the same kind of unit was uh, purchased but the unit cost was dollar 50 and number of units purchased was 75 so 50 multiplied by 75 gives the total amount of the purchase so how do we decide when we sell the inventory on september 10 10 units were sold but uh, how the company can decide whether it, it should use $30 cost or $50 for the cost of goods sold. So let's see how we can decide on that. So there are four methods which a company can decide. Company can choose to decide specific identification, average cost, FIFO which is first in first out and LIFO which is last in first out. So this is just an example of inventory purchased. August 1, 10 units were purchased at $91. Similarly, 51, 15 units for $106. And these purchase for these many dollars. And total purchase amount. And then sale of these goods. Uh, 20 units at $130. 23 units at $150. So let's see. When a unit uh, for a specific identification case, uh, when a unit is sold, the specific cost of the unit sold is added to the cost of goods sold. So on August 1, uh, 10 units at $91 is, was purchased. Total value is this much. And for 15 units on August 3rd, total value was which much. So our inventory balance was 2500 uh, on August 14, TBC sold 20 bikes for Rs. 130 each. 9 bikes originally cost 91 and 11 bikes originally cost 106. So they um, found the specific uh, units which costed whatever amount in their, in their document. They just uh, used that uh, particular uh, value for each of the items uh, to calculate the cost of goods sold. So this is just a specific identification. Just identify the original cost of each unit and then put the cost of goods sold as that mean.
uh, a similar entry is made for each of the cells. So, uh, this is like um, this is simple general entry for the um, for the uh, goods sold. So whenever the good was sold here at two hundred two thousand six hundred dollars, um, the total amount of sale was two thousand six hundred dollar. Adding these two, um, it will give you two thousand six hundred dollar of cash. So it is entered on the debit side and sales on the credit side and cost of gold good with a specific identification of each unit was 1985 as calculated before here and inventory was created for 1985 so cost of goods sold on august 31 was 2610 calculated is like this by uh, identifying a specific item for each of the yeah, actual unit sold. Income statement uh, cost of goods sold uh, was this for each of the item uh, identifying specific units sold. Uh, nine units were sold, uh, which were actually co which actually costed ninety one dollars. Eleven units sold, which actually costed hundred six dollars. And similarly for these. The, um, a specific identification is good but if there are too many items need to be sold then it's very clumsy so we should look for different methods like average cost methods when a unit is sold the average cost of each unit in the inventory is assigned to the cost of goods sold the cost of goods sold available for the sale plus units on hand on the mm, sorry a uh, cost of goods so, uh, goods available for sale divided by units on hand on the date of sale this is how we can calculate the average total cost available for sale divided by a unit uh, on hand so this is quite easy this is simple average calculation so total uh, total number of units we have is 10 plus 15 and total uh, cost cost of purchase is this much adding these two so adding these two makes twenty five hundred dollars and number of units is twenty five so twenty five hundred divided by twenty five uh, uh, which gives hundred so irrespective of how much each unit was purchased like ninety one or hundred six we just calculate uh, the average of entire unit hundred dollars and that's what we put in the uh, cost of goods sold like uh, 20 units were sold we know that the average was hundred dollar irrespective of amount which we used when uh, we purchased we just use the uh, average and use that amount as cost of goods sold for the general entry this is average cost method and similarly we do cash and sales entry and cost of goods sold and inventory for journal entry so this is uh, another just an example of for a future again future purchases but every time we we are done with the sale we again calculate the new average uh, for the remaining inventory and then we uh, use that new uh, average calculation like here for the remaining inventory uh, of value 3990 and 35 units were left when the 20 was sold 55 minus 20 is 35 so we again calculate the average and then we use the average value um, for the um, new units sold so every time after certain period we keep on uh, recalculating the average whenever a sale is made we have to keep calculating the average depending on the number of units it's sold Mm, and then we can uh, again decide on cost of goods sold for future units. Similarly, we can do the income statement and balance sheet entry. So first in first out. First in first out uses oldest cost entry to the cost of goods sold and recent cost entry to the ending inventory. So let's see an example to see how it works. In first in first out method. Um, the first 
uh, uh, inventory which is purchased that is used uh, that value is used first like for uh, if somebody buys uh, 20 units so first we will use the first purchases like the one purchased with from um, uh, uh, for the value of 91 dollars so 91 dollars multiplied by 10 which is gives 910 dollars then remaining 10 will be used for the purchase of future uh, for the uh, for other uh, items which were purchased at a later date because uh, this was this is a first in first out method so august 1st inventory was entered first and then august 3rd entry was entered so since first we have to exhaust this 10 units which we have already exhausted another 10 purchase is there so next is from this one so next purchase will be 10 multiplied by 106 which gives this much so first in first out just means the uh, inventory which came in first we have to take um, that uh, we have to use the purchase value of that much uh, to calculate the cost of goods sold for journal entry similarly we have to do the journal entry cost of goods sold 1970 using first in first out method similarly in the next purchase is again uh, it says 5 units at 106 so we have already sold 20 units so out of that 5 was left so before using this price we have to first exhaust this 5 so first 5 will be sold at 106 dollar then next 18 will be sold at next one not the 28th one on the 17th because it is first in first out method so on august 14 and 17 the unit were purchased at 115 so we will use 115 as the cost of goods sold so here 18 multiplied by 115 which gives 2070 so total cost of goods sold is 1420 using this we will do the journal entry balance sheet inventory 1420 here similarly in income statement cost of goods sold last in first out is just reverse of the first in first out recent cost is used to calculate cost of goods sold and oldest cost is used to calculate the ending inventory last in first out example exam uh, here whenever there is a sale we will use the last in first out last in means last purchase so august 3rd was the last purchase and it was 406 dollars so first 15 item which will uh, will be sold should be the cost of goods sold should be calculated at 106 dollars per unit so 15 multiplied by 106 will give 115.90 and next 5 purchase will be used for, for the previous one. So previous one is at $91 so we calculate like this. 91 multiplied by 5 which, which is 455. So total value gives the cost of goods sold which is 2045. Similarly uh, we will do the journal entry. Now for next purchase again we have to use the most recent one so for next 10 purchase we have to use the most recent uh, use the cost for most recent purchase which is 119 here and then the next most recent is this like August 17th so 13 multiplied by 115 which gives this much so total cost of goods sold is 2685 Similarly, we can do the journal entry, find out the value of income uh, cost of goods sold in the, for the income statement and inventory for the balance sheet. So this is the, just a summary. Uh, uh, company should decide one of the methods which best suits their needs. For specific identification, actual cost of the unit sold is used for calculating cost of goods sold. For inventory, actual cost of units remaining. For an average cost method, we use number of units sold times average unit cost. And for inventory, number of units on hand times the average unit cost. In case of first in first out, cost of earliest purchases on the hand prior to the sale is used to calculate cost of goods sold. For inventory calculation, cost of most recent purchased units. In case of last in first out, 
cost of most recently purchased units did used to calculate cost of goods sold. For inventory, cost of our list purchase resume still in inventory. So this is quite simple. Just you can go through the sheet to know more and understand better. Thank you. Um, subscribe to my channel if you want to learn more on accounting and other things. Thanks for watching.